in the clinic. Because Andre had no relatives. At his request, the doctor called his neighbor and, in a very matter-of-fact manner, informed her that further treatment was futile, they had arrived too late. It was difficult to say how much longer he could hold on. Although his body was strong, he could only live for two months to half a year. Approximately. The doctor lowered his head. And it sounded like a verdict. Andre was already lying in the hospital. Undergoing examinations and treatment. His son and wife had been in a car accident a year ago. Leaving him all alone. This gentleman had never emerged from the grief of losing his loved ones. This was undoubtedly his mood. Thanks to that kind neighbor. She came today to pick him up from the hospital. After undergoing several rounds of chemotherapy. He had become thin and pale. Since that accident. Andre had closed himself off. Lost interest in life. And now faced a terminal diagnosis. Why? Why was all of this happening to me? He kept agonizing in his suffering. I still have strength. But they told me my time has come. He needed to put everything in order and then lie down and wait for the end. Andre thought. But a few months ago. He himself had requested death to take away his life. Life without his beloved son and wife had been unbearable. But when this moment arrived. He truly felt afraid. Andre lay there, pondering what to do. Just lying in bed. Constantly contemplating death was how terrifying it was. The doctor said he had at least one more month. At most half a year. And he had to try to make this time meaningful. Now. All he wanted was to spend the remaining days of his life with dignity. Perhaps there were still a few months left. Depending on luck. He gave himself one task, to live. Not to dwell on the illness. Not to wait for the end. All he needed now was harmony and tranquility. Far away from the city. He recalled the day before that tragic accident when he. And his wife had bought a small countryside villa. He decided to spend the rest of his life there. Andre contemplated how much time fate had given him. He packed the essentials. Left the keys with his neighbor. Told her the address of the house he would be residing in. And the name of the small village. And then boarded the train. The gentleman was very tired, the journey had left him exhausted. He took some medication. Chewed on something. And then lay down to rest. Surprisingly. The house was very dry. Filled with the aroma of herbs and cloves that seeped. In through the small window openings. Throughout the night. He had fragmented dreams. Running somewhere. Calling out to someone. But never able to reach or catch them. What was astonishing was that when he woke up in the morning. Andre felt a surge of strength and a long lost hunger. In this small house. He found a gas stove and used an old teapot to boil water. Slowly brewing tea. Andre sliced a piece of bread. Spread a thick layer of butter on it. And then stepped out of his home. The scenery here was breathtaking. As the ancient village was now covered with wild grass and wildflowers. Andre felt lightheaded. Surrounded by the fresh and rich aroma of the countryside. He stood there. Deeply inhaling the essence of life. He intended not only to put his own life in order but also to renovate. This small village house. After a thorough cleaning. Andre began living a simple rural life. He drew water from the well. Lit fires for warmth. And had acquired a good library. The gentleman immersed himself in a captivating world. One filled with travels. Adventures. And escapades. Only now did he realize how much he had lost in life. And now he was eager to make amends for all regrets. After drinking a cup of hot herbal tea each morning. He would venture into the nearest forest. 
exploring the wonders of nature. His walks in the wilderness brought him immense joy. In a few weeks of rural living, he had put on a little weight. And most importantly, both his body and spirit had grown stronger. One day in the forest, Andre discovered a small, helpless creature that appeared to be a growing puppy or perhaps a young wolf, making it difficult to distinguish. The animal was covered in oil and entangled in fragments of broken wires and ropes, struggling in a filthy pit. It was evident that someone, likely irresponsible individuals from his own village, had haphazardly set up this trap in the forest. The young creature had fallen into it and was clearly very young. Not fully comprehending the situation. It might have been a young wolf. And its natural instincts had failed to protect it. Regardless. Andre felt compelled to save this life. Or the wild animal would perish. The animal lay quietly in the pit. Breathing air through its nose and listening to everything around it. The distance between humans and animals had now shrunk to a tangible level. And after relentless efforts, Andre successfully rescued the creature from the oily trap. He wrapped it in his own coat and brought the little one home. Over the next few days, he needed to spend time carefully cleaning the oil cover and blood-stained areas on the young wolf's body. The pieces of wire embedded in the skin, contaminated with oil, required attention and treatment. The long road to recovery began, step by step, inch by inch. As Andre delicately tended to the young wolf's skin, cleaning it with soap and rinsing it thoroughly. Sometimes he wondered why he had taken on such a burden. After all, Andre himself had an incurable illness. Feeling pity for oneself was one of the worst feelings in the world. And even for adults, tears could well up in the eyes. At times, he still contemplated the fragility of life, wanting to escape it all. But then he remembered that we have a responsibility to those who depend on us, those who hold hope in us for their lives. So, several months passed, and he couldn't die. And what would happen to my little wolf without me? He suddenly longed for life. Just simple life, drinking milk in the morning. Strolling in the silvery dew. Listening to the chirping of crickets in the grass. Appreciating beautiful sunrises and sunsets, all these trivial things. Even if he had only a month or two left. He didn't crave death, instead. He praised life seeing it as a great gift to humanity. The man called the little wolf over, filled his bowl with food, and then stepped out onto the porch. For the first time during this period, the young wolf finished its meal, climbed out of the bowl, and used its tongue to lick away a tear from the man's face. Then, the wolf lay on the stairs, resting its head on the man's knee, gazing into his eyes, as if it completely understood. Under the starry sky, two lonely souls met, they needed each other. From that moment on, the wolf and the man became one, becoming the best of friends and inseparable companions. Andre had once thought that when the young wolf grew up, it would return to the forest on its own. But things didn't turn out that way. The young wolf did leave at times, but after long separations, it would always come back to its friend. Six months later, after all the examinations, he learned that the cancer had regressed. At least at this stage, the doctor told him, you are now in remission, which is very rare in my practice, so we can continue to fight together, and nothing is lost yet. The doctor curiously asked, If you don't mind sharing, how did you do it? He replied, I simply yearned for life. I lived and enjoyed life. And I had a little furry friend to help me. Bears may engage in aggressive behavior towards humans even. When they are not hungry. 
usually to protect themselves or protect their cubs. Bears living in the depths of the wilderness don't know enough about humans and avoid them. However, this does not prevent them from coexisting. Everything in this world is balanced and interconnected. Until the invasion of humans, human overexploitation has broken this food chain, often wiping out entire animal species. Of course not all of them do such a thing. But even a small fraction can cause major disruption to natural interacting systems. Bears are constantly working to replenish their fat reserves for the winter. And their food choices reflect this. Bears are omnivores. But live mainly on plants and insects. They also eat other people's food. Poach prey from other predators and eat newborn herbivores. This is low effort. High reward food. Salmon are an important item for bears along the coast. As they can sit in the throats of streams and the salmon will come to them. Chasing humans provides very little nourishment. And bears will attack and kill humans. But only if threatened. Hunting humans is almost unheard of. If you put a bunch of food in your tent. The bear might take a bite. The same way you get candy at the cash register when you're already there after all. Put the same food in a bag and hang it on a tree so you are safe. A smart bear might still get food. But they almost never pass a sleeping human a few hundred feet away. It so happens that some people harm nature. Without thinking about the consequences. While others try to right wrongs to restore balance. It is the eternal interplay of good and evil. If one person gets the chance to help, the whole world really does get a little bit better. Set in a picturesque location in eastern Russia, near a very dense tall forest. This story tells of the collision of good and evil actions. And a miracle happens. I'll tell you everything from the beginning. This happened in early spring, when the forest was still growing relentlessly. Nearby villagers will go fishing. There are also a lot of mushrooms and fish by the river. And the locals often grab them and eat them. The woman was collecting money that day. She decided not to take the boat because the days were short and she wanted to be home before sunset and the river was high. And there were all kinds of things in that river. But she hopes to catch some mushrooms and fish. Which will be a very good catch for her camping. The woman chose a fairly open spot near the river. With few trees or bushes. The entire area is clearly visible within tens of meters in all directions. Slowly learning that the more fresh fish she gets in the first place. The sooner she can go back. After the death of her husband. The woman supports her family doing her favorite hobby. Probably she caught the first fish within minutes and it turned out to be a rather large trout. The lady was happy and proceeded to do the same. And about 10 minutes later a rather large grayling. And several trout splashed in her bucket. What a catch. What a great day. She was genuinely happy. So fascinated by the gathering process that. She threw caution to the wind and stopped monitoring the land around her. It's a pretty dangerous place. When the woman pulled back the fishing rod again and caught a new prey. There was a rustling sound from behind. The woman turned around in horror and saw a bear cub a meter away. Which had clearly smelled freshly caught fish from the forest. And now she stood by. Watching her pluck with very hungry eyes. She knew that where there was a cub there must be a mother bear. So she quickly fed the cub some fish so that he wouldn't linger around. The cub grabbed the food that was handed to her and devoured it. But she didn't finish it all. She took the rest of the fish into her small mouth and walked briskly into the forest. The woman continued fishing after making sure the bear was gone. After a while, the catch near the shore stopped. And the woman realized that the fish must have just migrated to the middle of the forest. So she put on her wading boots and went deep into the forest to gather mushrooms and fish. This time, 
things moved faster. She was standing in the middle of the forest with a fish collecting stick. Keen on collecting fish. And didn't notice anything approaching from behind. When she realized she wasn't alone. She looked back and was amazed at what she saw. Deep in the forest at her waist was still the bear. And he watched the woman catch the fish without moving. When the eyes of the woman and the beast finally met. The bear looked pitifully at the woman. Who realized how hungry the poor little baby must be. He bravely walked up to the human. And got very close to her. Little bear stood beside the woman as she gathered in the middle of the forest. He watched eagerly as each new fish entered the bucket. When the woman had caught enough. She went to the shore. Little bear also ran to the shore. Looking at the woman pitifully. Andre Philippe took pity on the animal. And gave him some more of the fish he had caught. The bear quickly grabbed them. But did not eat them. He took them deep into the forest. Andre Philippe was very surprised by the unusual behavior of the cub. And decided to follow him cautiously. Trying to figure out what made him so close to a person in the first place. Who did not immediately eat the prey he received. But hugged it into the forest. She wondered where the bear had taken the fish. She followed the bear. Keeping a safe distance from it. At first. She ran along the path less traveled. Dropping and picking up slippery fish repeatedly. But then there was an impenetrable bush in front of her. The woman tried to walk quietly behind the animal so as not to startle her. When the bear disappeared into the dense bushes. Andre Philippe gently pushed aside the thick branches and saw a large empty head. Which was blocked by dense trees. What the woman saw in the clearing shocked her to the depths of her soul. A bear is lying in last year's hay. She was lying on her side. Breathing very hard. Seeing the woman. She wanted to raise her paw pitifully. But failed. The woman realizes that the bear is in a bad condition. And probably won't survive. Even today. Judging by the red spots on her body. Andre Philippe guessed that she was probably injured by poachers. But she escaped from them and is now spending her last days hiding in this clearing. Only her cubs try to help her at least live longer. This is what the bear cub managed to get from a human. By bringing her these two fish. Andre Philippe realized that she must help this poor animal. No matter the cost. Without hesitation. She dashed back to the river grabbed the day's harvest and dashed back into the bushes at that moment she didn't think about what she would use to support her family today all her thoughts were on the bear lying alone in the grass and the cub who was fearless and desperate to save his mother andre philippe returned to the bear and without getting too close she put all the fish in the bucket a few meters away from her head she hopes the smell of fresh fish will make the bear stand up. And walk a few steps to find food. The woman no longer bothered the animal. But hurried back to her village as soon as possible to report her discovery. In the forest to the regional game department. That same day. Bear got help. Also. She was rescued. Who knows what the story would have been like. If our protagonist hadn't been there that day. Or choose another place. But the bear was very happy that day. And a good person helped her and her cubs through his actions. She saves two lives. Thereby showing the beast that not all people are bad or cruel.